Welcome to part three of uh, Windwalker Echo, trying to create her into sort of a Laura Croft slash Uncharted character by introducing weapon and weapon states. Let's jump into it. Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So here we are inside of Windwalker Echo, the anime project available from Slay. Uh, this anim uh, project has the ability to run around with Echo in a very smooth fashion like this. Uh, you can disregard the little flying uh, companion there, it's from a different tutorial that is in this same project. But what we have done in this project is we have added on her back, we have a weapon on her back currently. And we have the ability to equip this weapon. And we have the ability to unequip this weapon. Also, if we have the weapon equipped, we can reload. Uh, so we need to actually have it equipped to allow the reload animation to play and that is what that looks like and In addition to that we also have the ability to aim when we have the weapon equipped So that's what that looks like and we can also do these things while running so we can unequip the weapon equip the weapon reload the weapon and also aim while running around So yeah, that's what we will be creating in this series Continuing from last episode, let's add the ability to actually draw your weapon so you can start aiming with it. So to do that, we'll go to uh, edit project settings again, and we'll go to input and we'll add a action mapping and we'll call this, let's call it aiming. And then as a key, I wonder if we can do the right mouse click. Yes, we can. So we'll use that one. Going back to Echo, we will now find ourselves a little bit of space. We will go for uh, aiming, we call it an action event. And what we want to do here is to start off, we want to check our state. We want to say we're only allowed to aim if we actually have the weapon up. So that means we need to check, are we armed? If we are armed, we will then be allowed to proceed. And in this case, it means that we want to tell our anim instance that it wants to go into a new state. So to do that com uh, communication a little bit uh, nicer, we're going to create another blueprint interface. We're going to be calling this one uh, BPI underscore aiming seems to make sense to me. And we can add one function in here called set aiming. And as a parameter in, we can have a boolean that says aiming. And that is fine. Now opening up our echo anim blueprint, we need to make sure that we actually have this interface. So we add it. So BPI aim, like so. Compile, save, make sure to go to your interfaces and implement the event. From here we can right click and promote to variable, like so. And aiming is fine, I think, as a name. Now that we have that in place, let's go back to our character. We can compile and save before leaving. So in our character echo now, we can send this information. So we get a mesh. And from that we get our anim instance, like so. And from here we can say uh, set aiming. And we can have two of them. And make sure that the one that's true is aiming and the one that's false. Actually, we don't need to have it like that what we can do instead is we can just take the release over here so when we release we will set the aiming to false now that that's better i think there we go now we need to actually be able to do something with this so we need to go to our anim blueprint and actually create some states for this so finding our anim graph we can now Let's see, we have locomotion over here, we have full body over here. Let's make some space. Let's go here and type in state. Uh, 
machine, add new state machine. You can name this something new if you want to. We can call it aiming state. Uh, from here we'll drag out and have a state. We'll call this idle. And going in here we can just go and get our idle animation. Have that one playing there. Compile and save. We go up one level. We drag out and create another state. We call this one in. And we say we're supposed to enter this when aiming is true. Going back to our aiming state, we send one back as well. And we say that this one should happen when our aiming is false. There we go. Now we go up one level to the state again. Actually, we go into our aiming here and we make sure to get our... What is it called? It is... If we go to our animations and we type in pistol, equip pistol standing. No, no, that's wrong. Idle pistol should be the one, I think. Yeah, that one will be good. So idle pistol, we go back to our animation blueprint and we get idle pistol. Compile and save. Now we want to tweak our transition a little bit to make it a little bit more fluid. Uh, so the one that goes from idle to aiming, we will increase the duration from 0 0.2 to 0 0.4. We'll change the blend logic from be, to be inertialization. That should give it a much smoother look. Uh, for backwards, we can change to 0 0.4, although it won't make much difference because uh, this one we will be driving by our boolean of his aiming so the transition to aiming is the only one that's going to actually take effect um, so let's go back to our anim graph again and let's see here we want to save our cache here from the anim state save cache and we can call this one aiming cache like so. That should be fine. Uh, and now from here we need to react to this. And we want to do this by having a blend similarly to what we had earlier with our montage. So we will do a... We want all states to be playing before the montage because the montage will be overwriting. So we'll take our full body montage, or not montage, uh, full body cache over here, and we'll put a layered blend between, like so. And drag it down a bit and hook that up. And then we want to make use of our uh, aiming cache and have that as our blend like so. And we want to have this blend be dictated by our boolean. So one way we can do this is by having a select float and then having the a value be uh, one and the b value be two and have the aiming be in here. So whenever we're aiming, it's gonna pick a, which is gonna be Blend weighting one, which means that we will be making use of our aiming cache here. Now, uh, we also need to set up our how our blend is supposed to happen. So we open up a new branch filter for this one. And I believe a uh, spine zero one, it's a bit further down than spine zero two, but I think this works nice. And blend depth is zero because that's usually what I use. But if you want to have more transitions, you can play around with blend depth as well. We want to have the mesh space rotation set and we want to have this on override. And I think this looks good. And like so. And I think that might be all we need for now. Let's test this out and see what it looks like. 
So we run around, I click right click, nothing happens. We click on arm, so we have our weapon ahead of us. We should now be armed. And if I right click now, we have a uh, we weapon pointing out. And it's transitioning nicely when we're starting to run uh, to use. We might want to tweak a few things. Like for example, uh, our animation for equipping and unequipping, I feel like we could alter a little bit. So we have asset details over here. We have our blend, blend in and blend out. Uh, let's see what might be good values here. I think it might look better if we make it a little snappier. So 0 0.2 blending in and blending out. And we need to make sure to do this on our unequip as well. Uh, so we change that like so. Like so. These are personal preferences, of course. You may change this however you feel like. So we equip. We aim. We unequip. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. And also we have our reload animation, which of course did not have a check there. So let's make sure that we have one. Uh, da, 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 reload here. Current state. So when we reload, we need to have a state when we are actually armed. Like so. Compile save. Let's try again. There we pull out our weapon and we run and run and we reload and we stand still and reload that looks good to me I hope that this is of value and that you were able to follow along and uh, as a slight recap let's go through what we have been doing uh, to start off we have a, let's start off with our skeleton. We have created two sockets, one in the hand and one on the back, so we can have weapons there. So one we can have a weapon in our hand and one we can store it on our back. Uh, to start off, our character will spawn the weapon, which is a simple blueprint of just, uh, let's see, we don't have it open here. Just a simple weapon with a skeletal mesh in it. And our character will spawn it. It will set it as a reference, so we have it available for later for other things. And then we attach it to our component, which is our uh, spines, which hang on our back to begin with. Then whenever we press the one key, we will arm ourselves. Uh, and we'll do that by sending this input action over here. So we'll play a montage. The montage, when it gets to a certain point, we'll call a uh, blueprint notify. The blueprint notify will check if we have set it to, if you're supposed to be armed or disarmed after this. And once that has played or sent its message to uh, the owning pawn that it should arm or disarm, the owning pawn will then react to those by actually attaching it to either the spine socket or the hand socket. And then the montage is done for arming and the same works for the unequipping, but in reverse. Then we also have the reload animation, which is simply just playing a montage and the, just checking if we're armed or not. We also have the input of aiming, which will just set a variable on our anim instance to set it to true or false. Our anim instance has the set aiming function, which is very simple, it's just setting the local variable of aiming, which in turn is being used by our anim graph in our anim aiming state. It just has an idle state to begin with, and then when we set it to true, we will transition into aiming. And if we set it to false, we'll transition out. And while we are transitioning into aiming, our aiming cache will be used to drive a half body translation so that we have the top body from the, uh, the aiming 
and the lower body from whatever we have calculated earlier, which is stored in the full body cache. And it's being driven by the aiming boolean. Then we continue with this. And if we have a montage playing, we do the same thing here. The montage plays and also these additional parts over here. So the final pose over here is being used to drive the upper body in case we have something instead of overwriting the entire body. So the, uh, the lower body here is still being kept. So we can actually do our running and reloading or running and getting or disarming ourselves. And it looks good while doing so instead of having the animation jitter and stop. And that is essentially everything that we have created to get this result today. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.